What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. What's up? It's your boy. Can't you tell me YouTube shit? Amen. Say, man. We are lit, eh? Lit over to me. Turn, 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 turn. Today? It's a motherfucking day. So you're heading outside the biggest crib out here, man. Amen. Say, man. We turn, 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 turn in the gang, man. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, these videos up. You did. We gonna keep on putting out this heat. Coming to you as a black Hebrew is like, man, make sure y'all fuck with your boy. And yeah, let's gonna get this motherfucker started, man. Um, today? Two motherfucking day? Stay here outside. Let's get into this bitch, man. Big crip out here. So, y'all all know. Jordan Poole. You know what I'm saying? Jordan Poole had responded um, to Draymond Green and Stephen Curry. Um, his dad wanted to fight Draymond Green. And I'm like, what the fuck? Because, you know, Jordan Poole got traded to the Washington Wizards. He did, like, crook. So, he gonna have, they gonna have to play the Washington Wizards, like, any time of that week. You know what I'm saying? Any time of that, 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 that schedule, I mean. So, when they meet the fuck up in the locker room, bro, this is about to go down. Like, no cap. Um, now, I thought Draymond Green was just a fault nigga, you know what I'm saying? After that, you feel me? Um, Because ain't no damn way, you know what I'm saying? After all that shit, that situation, bro, I would have just, after the, after all that, just fought the nigga again. But, um, you know, Draymond Green was just chilling and shit. I mean, not Draymond, Jordan Poole was just chilling and shit, man. And, um... You know what I'm saying? He was playing the full game. I'm like, damn, I don't know how the fuck he did that. Nigga, I would have had to at least get my get back or get two niggas and jump that nigga. Like, come on, bro. But, uh, Jordan Poole, you know, they lost to the Lakers. You dig? And Stephen Curry said his goodbyes to uh, Jordan Poole. But Stephen Curry is getting deeper and deeper, Paul, into the situation. Of uh, what's going on between what happened between Jordan Poole and Draymond Green, and why didn't they just really just try to step up? To, now I ain't saying step up to Draymond because they probably <laughs> Draymond already hit that. They they ain't from where I'm from. They from the burbs, nigga. No cap. So you know, I don't think Steph Curry and him and, and Clay would do that shit. But you know what I'm saying. I guess it would have stood up for J Jordan Poole. But I got the video of uh, Stephen Curry talking more onto the details. And we got something to say about what happened, what Jordan Poole did after that. So make sure y'all enjoy these videos, man. Um, I try to put out the heat for y'all. And let's get into it. What's going on there guys we back with another one and this video I've been looking forward to hearing Steph really speak on the incident between Draymond Green and Jordan Poole you know during the season there was a lot of criticism if you remember at the beginning of this when Steph and Clay didn't jump in and intervene when they saw Draymond walking towards them and, and so it was some blame to go there right they were like you know the leader should have stepped in between that but there's been reports coming out that Jordan Poole had gotten on everybody's nerves at a certain point 
and Draymond serving him justice. We've seen Draymond and his his father get into it on social media like a week ago, but we never truly heard from Steph because he kept it professional throughout the year. But he went in depth a little bit about some of the challenges that they face. Let's check it out. Honestly, I don't know. I feel like, you know, maybe more of a, um, I don't know. We, we had a, I can't even tell you how many conversations we had, you know, training camp when the incident happened to the beginning of the season when, you know, you're trying to make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of expectations on a daily basis of how you deal with, you know, personal relationships, how you try to be professional when it comes to the job that we're all uh, here to do, you know, dealing with some of the uncomfortable nature of, of you know, the remnants of, of, of that situation. Cause it's, it, we always talked about it between JP and, and Draymond, you know, being able to try to rectify the situation, you know, have uh, the necessary conversations from a, coaches up front office standpoint like I'm sure you could argue about should there have been a suspension or not and it's like um, we had so many conversations um, and so many kind of back and forth in that moment of what were the, what the right course of action was and there were a lot of variables that you had to take into play um, so I feel like there's no regret there it's just a matter of like it was an unfortunate situation that everybody was put in and at the end of the day, we felt like time would heal, you know, some of those wounds in the sense of allowing us to just be, um, you know, somewhat understanding of like when we're on the court, we're here to hoop. And honestly, that's that's how it should be in the first place. We'd love to have you know, deeper relationships and friendships and, and ability to let that expand off the court. But it, at a bare minimum, there's trust that we're all here to add value to the team. And I felt like we 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 have bright spots, but uh, we just couldn't sustain it. And arguably, if you think about it, long-winded way of saying this, if you think about it in the, in the playoffs, uh, you know, it's a, it a tough matchup with LA. But a couple games here and there where we, you know, we all, I'm not everybody individually levels up their game and, and plays to the level that we should. It's a different story. It's just that's how basketball goes, right? Like if everybody plays their best um, or the, the in each game in the series, you know, the, the team that usually, you know, has guys play at or above their level is probably going to win. Um, and that's why everybody watches. That's the unpredictable nature of, of the game. Uh, we were just on the wrong side of it this year, which then illuminated all the other issues that we had throughout the year. So um, it'll be interesting for us to have a fresh start and uh, and regain the culture that we've established over this, this last decade. Elevated. Yeah. So um, well, those are the two greatest shooters of all time, in my opinion, personally. And it's just things that you learn in practice, in the game, on the road, um, that you wouldn't be able to learn not being in the mix, you know? And I'm thankful for that, grateful for that. Um, you learn, you apply it to what you, your skill set, uh, the things you want to be able to be good at. Um, also, built a relationship to where I can ask them. You know, I can text Steph, I can text Clay, I can call them um, and just have a conversation. Yeah, so that doesn't leave, that doesn't go anywhere. Um, if anything, I just I just know the plays that they run. And, and the split action and the high ball screen, so competitive advantage. Yo, so now that the... Uh and the trade is actually final. I felt like I come on here and <clears throat> just say to JP how much I appreciate the four years, brother. Um, you're a champion. Uh, you grew up, you know, right in front of everybody's face in terms of, you know, that first year where it was it was rough and a lot of injuries and you know, was trying to find your way to going to the G League and coming back and helping us finish 15 and five down the stretch of that. Your second year, us winning a championship your third year um, and fighting to the end, you know, this past year. So can't wait to see you blossom, big fella. Can't wait to see you shine in your own situation. And just looking forward to, you know, competing, obviously, but being a fan of, of everything that you become. Good luck to you, man, you know. So Steph has some good points, man. Um, if they win, they beat the Lakers, they probably have a chance to win the whole thing and it changes the narrative. 
at the same time, we also seen Trouble in Paradise throughout that Sacramento series. We saw a blow up on the bench with Draymond and Poole. And we also saw him not listening to Steph and them on the bench. And he, his pride was still bruised. And that's what I always said from the onset of the incident that took place, right? Whenever critical, tough leadership is needed and you're in someone's face and you're demanding a lot for them, are they able to compartmentalize what transpired and not take it personal and look at it as just business? And you, I don't think you could separate the two because – of how you have to get messages across sometimes. And Draymond being so demonstrative, you know, Pool is wondering, like, where it can go. Because now it's different from when you know someone is talking to you and it might a little spit might fly out their mouth on your chest or something like that, but they ain't, they ain't hit you yet. But when you know somebody will punch you in the face, it's a little different and you become defensive or reflexive just by nature. And I think Jordan Poole, whenever Draymond tried to son him, he feel like he's being son now. He don't feel like it's a big brother no more. And so he gets defensive at times with Draymond. Just, just you know, just that, that's um, him fighting for his manhood and stuff like that, right? You know, he don't want to be seen as soft or anything. And you can see, I only show those last couple videos because you see he still has a good relationship with Steph, still has a good relationship with Clay, um, but definitely not Draymond. And we saw what happened this week with his friend and his father coming out, having some words for Draymond Green. But I wanted to hear what Steph had to say about the challenges of the season. And they had some up and down moments, but it was only flashes, right? It wasn't anything... Is that was and, and you could tell like they weren't winning role games like you're accustomed to. They uh like there was a point where you really thought they could lose that Sacramento series, and that's not common for the team. Outside of a monster Steph game seven, you know, who knows what would have happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's where they were last year. But I think Jordan Poole going and getting his own team. In Washington, and you got Steph, uh, Draymond, Clay. You got the core together still. Then you bring in CP3, who is a player they feel like can unlock some of the talents of like Jonathan Kaminga and some of the other younger guys who haven't found footing. I think that is fitting for what both teams are trying to do going forward. So, um, yeah, man. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments, though. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace. All right, boom. So the whole reason I brought that up, man, is because I think Jordan Poole has removed all of the Warriors from his anything he got to do anymore. You know what I'm saying? I think he's done with the Warriors, man. I guess he still had it up. And it just been announced that he took all the shit that had to do with the Warriors down. You know, he was always saying, he said, man, I always hit up um, Stephen Curry. I can hit up Clay, And we can go and talk about some shit. Bro, are you stupid? Then the niggas will got to trade it. I understand Draymond, Draymond was the enforcer, bruh. But Stephen Curry and Clay is the one that got them traded. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like he shouldn't be trying to talk to none of them motherfuckers, to be honest. He did what he did, like the smart move. You know, Draymond Green. Man, Draymond Green got an anger problem, man. And I don't know how Stephen Curry and Clay just. If, if Stephen Curry wasn't playing like Stephen Curry with the 50-point 50, 50 games, and, and Draymond not playing like the 8-point, 7-point games and shit, <laughs> bro, he would have been done trying to fire you off on Stephen Curry. Nigga, let's be honest, nigga. Like, like let's be 100% honest, nigga. I feel like if Stephen Curry wasn't the, the face of the team, the nigga who scored all the points, 
He would have been there trying to fire off on that nigga, bro. Cause ain't no damn way. Uh, it lasted this long. Unless Stephen Curry don't be saying that he just go along with everything that's going on. Like the way that shit went down, man. Um, Jordan Poole, you know what I'm saying? He did. He was like they saying he was more of a. Um, he was trying to be more. I guess he was trying to be more with the team. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to be like the leader of the team. But it wasn't gonna work because they had they had Curry and. Let's all be honest. Jordan Poole, you not know Curry. You did. And I feel like Draymond Green, he felt mad because he said he made he pushed so much effort into getting you into the league to play with the Warriors. He get you this match contract. And then you just want to talk shit to his face. He's like, damn, bro. Because you because at first he was in the G League, you know what I'm saying? He was in the G League. And you know, Draymond Green was kept on calling to see if he was gonna be alright. And you know, but I feel like man, Draymond Green, you can't hold that onto him anyway because I understand. Yeah, you want him to to play, but I, I, of course, y'all want you want him to play at y'all own expense too. Because you know, sometimes you probably feel like the team you got don't need that one extra boost of a player. You did. So he helped y'all win too. He helped y'all win the championship. So I feel like, but I feel like Jordan Poole, like man, if y'all didn't have me, nigga. Y'all wouldn't have won the championship, so in the part of Hans's high part of everything, nigga, I, I won the championship. Oh, he laughed. You know what I'm saying? He turned that into an eye. I don't know who won the MVP. Stephen Curry. So, you know, you know, Jordan Poole, man, he 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 let his ego get a little bit over it. Over. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, when you win a championship, man, and you win it with Clay and Curry, you be like, damn, nigga, yeah, I did that, nigga. They couldn't have done it without me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They call me the third splash, brother. What the time I drain mine? The third brick, brother, nigga. Fuck me, talk. The first brick, the first brick, brother. Oh, glass. Nigga, shoot nothing but bricks, nigga. But nah, bro, so, and, you know, a lot of people want to smoke with um, Draymond Green, man, um, like Anthony Edward, man, you know, Anthony Edward tall as hell too, so that mean that'd be a good fight, you know. I feel like the I feel like the Warriors gonna have a lot of heat after them, you know what I'm saying? Just because they've been winning so much. And plus, you know, Draymond he is like he talk a lot of shit, nigga. Like a lot of shit. And niggas get tired of that shit, man. You you know, you you you, you try to play the NBA and this motherfucker yelling at you like as loud as he can be, then he fucking up his teammates and shit. <laughs> then he be like he he be eating other people in the nuts and shit, bro. Motherfuckers get mad, but you know, you see it, and everybody seen it. Jordan Poole should have knew he was fucked. As soon as Steve Kerr got on the Draymond or Draymond Green podcast, nigga. <laughs> nigga, I don't think it ain't never been a time, nigga. It ain't never been a time where Coaston got on a on a player's podcast to talk about how they could have how he could have done better into the NBA. And man, I, I feel like damn, which one is these motherfuckers the coaches? Like damn, they got the coach to come on the Draymond Green, the Draymond Green podcast. That is wild to me, bro. If I was Steph, if I was Dr- Jordan Poole, in that moment I was like, man, yep, gone, nigga, ain't no way. You ain't got no podcast. <laughs> Man, you ain't got no podcast. That nigga ain't finna just sign you up quick as hell. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, man, um, Jordan Poole, man, I think he was trying to bet on himself. You did. He was trying to bet on himself that he could be the, the player to, um, that they don't need him. But they don't understand that the Warriors already got a system. Stephen Curry, Clay, and Draymond. Now, y'all are high experienced role players. You know what I'm saying? When you get above the system, they don't want you. You gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Now, you gotta go to this other team, Washington Wizards, with Kuzma. <laughs> At everybody on the left, they don't have an I I T. They have Porzingis. They had uh Bradley Bill. I don't even know how they wasn't winning with that type of lineup. 
and he still couldn't win. So I feel like Jordan Poole, man, you don't have to just put your all into this type of um, effort, bro, because because at this point, man, you know you got they, you know this is how you go, man. You get you start moving around team, then eventually you start seeing yourself not in the league no more. You dig so. You got to make this like, this like make or break moments, you dig? So you got to expand your game, man. You got to lead this team. At least put up 30 to 25 points, nigga. Like, damn, bro. Like, because I don't, Kuzman did not expand his game. Unless this nigga start playing better when Porzingis is gone. I just don't understand how Kuzman didn't try to and get handles. Like, he played like, he played like a legit Lemmy role player. Like, Jordan Poole got a chance to be a leader on that bitch. Because he got the handles. He can, he know how to lead the shit. Kuzma played like a legit role play. Like when I seen this nigga Kuzma, when I seen this nigga Kuzma um, play with Porzingis, he always lined up on the on the side, nigga. And he like he knew exactly what to do. He would be like this. He get the ball, he will pass it, then he will stand on the corner like this. Like nigga, you ain't no nigga. No, it's, make the plays. Don't give up the ball and start sitting on the side of the corner for a, a shoot three, nigga. You gotta. Come through that bitch. Uh, 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 two or three or uh, uh, uh. y'all play the pass the ball. Make so he can so he can be shoot the ball. This nigga went straight to the corner. I'm like, oh man, cool. You, just, you ain't you ain't gonna learn, are you? But they want a nigga who's gonna score the ball, nigga, not be a, a role player, nigga. Come on, bro. But hey man, make sure you like subscribe to your videos up, man. Uh Stephen Curry um went deeper to the conversation. We got another video too about it too. So we you know we'll keep on getting them out then, fuck it. Uh and, and make sure y'all like and subscribe to the videos and yeah, let's get into this bitch. Good outside crib, man. Alright, gang. Yeah. Hey dad, you know that when we link up, dog, this shit be legendary. You know this is instrumental, you the engineer on it, so call that everywhere.